Today, we will talk about a remarkable discovery made by the most powerful telescope ever built inside the most famous supernova in history and the most mysterious objects in the universe. This discovery is the observation of a neutron star in the supernova SN 1987A by the James Webb Space Telescope. Neutron stars are, in short, one of the most fascinating and extreme objects in the cosmos. But finding them is not easy, especially if it's hidden in the dust and gas of a supernova remnant. That's why astronomers have been searching for one in SN 1987A for over three decades without success. But thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers have finally found it. This discovery is a major breakthrough for the field of astrophysics, as it reveals the origin and nature of the neutron star as well as the fate of the massive star that exploded in this particular supernova SN 1987A. In this video, I'm going to explain how the James Webb detected the neutron star, what are the properties and origin of the neutron star, and what are the implications and future prospects of the discovery. So, stay tuned and get ready to learn more about this amazing cosmic mystery. Astronomers used two of Webb's instruments, the Near-Infrared Camera, or NearCam, and the Mid-Infrared Instrument, or MIRI, to observe the supernova site. Together, these instruments can cover a wide range of wavelengths and sensitivities, and provide a comprehensive view of the infrared emission from SN 1987A. Webb observed SN 1987A for several hours and collected a large amount of data, the data showed that the infrared emission from the dust and gas in this supernova is not uniform, but rather concentrated on one side of the remnant. This is evident from the images show a bright spot on the eastern side of the ring of material that surrounds the supernova. This bright spot is about 10 times brighter than the rest of the ring, and it has a distinct spectrum that indicates a high temperature of about 1000 Kelvin, which is much hotter than the average temperature of the dust which is about 200 Kelvin. So, what could be causing this hot spot? Well, the most likely explanation is that there is a neutron star in the center of the supernova, and that it is heating up the dust on the eastern side with its radiation. It is expected that the neutron star emits high-energy radiation, such as X-rays and gamma rays, which can penetrate through the dust and gas and reach the inner edge of the ring. There, the radiation can interact with the dust particles and transfer some of its energy to them, making them glow in the infrared. This process is called dust heating, and it is a common phenomenon in the universe, especially around young and energetic stars. But how can we be sure that the radiation is coming from a neutron star and not from something else? Well, to answer this question, astronomers have also looked at the polarization of the infrared light which is a measure of how the light waves are oriented, and it can reveal the presence and the shape of a magnetic field, which can affect the way the light is scattered or reflected by the dust. James Webb has a special device called a coronagraph that can block the bright light from the center of the supernova and allow the detection of the faint polarization signal from the dust. Using this feature, astronomers have measured the polarization of the infrared light from the dust in SN 1987A, and they have found that it is not random, but rather organized in a specific pattern. This pattern is consistent with the expected polarization from a neutron star's magnetic field, which can twist and bend the light waves as they pass through it. The polarization pattern also matches the location and the shape of the hotspot, which suggests that they are both caused by the same source. This is a strong indication that the neutron star is indeed there, and that it is spinning and emitting radiation like a pulsar. Webb's observations of SN 1987A are the first ones to detect the effects of high energy emission from the probable young neutron star, and they are in agreement with previous predictions and simulations. Webb's observations are also complementary to those from other telescopes, such as the Hubble Space Telescope and the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array which have observed the supernova site in other wavelengths, such as visible light and radio waves. Together, these observations provide a complete picture of the supernova remnant and the neutron star within it.
Now let's dive deeper into the specifics of the neutron star itself. What are its properties and origin? How did it form and survive the supernova explosion? And what are the challenges and uncertainties in determining its nature? The neutron star in this supernova is estimated to have a mass of about 1.4 times the mass of the Sun, and a radius of about 10 kilometers. This means that it is extremely dense, with an average density of about 10 to the power of 17 kilograms per cubic meter. That's equivalent to squeezing the mass of a mountain into a teaspoon. It is also very hot, with a surface temperature of about 5 million Kelvin, which is almost 1,000 times hotter than the Sun. It is also very magnetic, with a magnetic field of about 10 to the power of 12 Gauss, which is a trillion times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. It is believed that it has formed from the collapse of the iron core of the massive star that exploded in SN 1987A. The massive star had a mass of about 20 times the mass of the Sun, and it burned through its nuclear fuel in a few million years. When it reached the end of its life, it ran out of energy to support its own weight, and its core collapsed under its own gravity. The core collapsed so fast that it bounced back and created a shock wave that tore apart the outer layers of the star, creating a supernova explosion. The core, however, did not collapse all the way to a black hole, but rather stopped at a point where the pressure from the tightly packed neutrons balanced the gravity. This is how a neutron star was born. The neutron star, however, did not emerge unscathed from the supernova. It was surrounded by a thick cloud of dust and gas, which blocked its radiation from reaching us. The dust and gas were ejected by the supernova explosion, and they formed a ring around the neutron star, as well as two lobes above and below it. The ring and the lobes are called the equatorial and the polar ejecta, respectively. The equatorial ejecta are denser and cooler than the polar ejecta, and they have a diameter of about a light year. The polar ejecta are thinner and hotter than the equatorial ejecta, and they have a length of about 15 light years. This neutron star had to wait for 37 years until the dust and gas became thin enough to let some of its radiation escape. The radiation, however, did not escape uniformly, but rather preferentially on one side of the ring. This is because the neutron star is not aligned with the ring but rather tilted by about 30 degrees. This means that the neutron star's radiation can reach the inner edge of the ring more easily on the eastern side, where the dust is less dense than on the western side, where the dust is more dense. This is why we see a hot spot on the eastern side, and not on the western side. The radiation is also affected by its own motion and rotation. It is moving at a speed of about 300 kilometers per second, relative to the center of the supernova. This is because the neutron star received a kick from the supernova explosion, which pushed it off center. It is also spinning at a rate of about 1.5 times per second, which is relatively slow for a young neutron star. This is because the neutron star lost some of its angular momentum during the supernova explosion, which slowed it down. This motion and rotation create a Doppler effect which shifts the frequency of its radiation depending on the direction of its movement. This means that the radiation is blue shifted on the side that is moving towards us, and red shifted on the side that is moving away from us. This creates a variation in the spectrum of the neutron star, which can be detected by James Webb. However, this neutron star nature is not fully understood, and there are still some challenges and uncertainties in determining its exact properties and origin. One of the challenges is that the neutron star is still obscured by a lot of dust and gas, which makes it difficult to observe it directly. Webb can only see the infrared emission from the dust, which is heated by the neutron star, but not the neutron star itself. So it cannot see the X-ray or gamma-ray emission from the neutron star, which would provide more information about its temperature and magnetic field. To see these emissions, we would need other telescopes, such as the Chandra X-ray Observatory, or the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, which can observe the supernova site in higher energy wavelengths. Another challenge is that the neutron star's emission is contaminated by other sources, which can confuse the interpretation of the data. For example, the supernova site is also illuminated by a nearby star, called Sangulik 69202, which was the companion of the star that exploded in SN 1987A. 
This star is very bright, and it can outshine the neutron star in some wavelengths. The supernova site is also influenced by the interaction of the ejecta with the interstellar medium, which is the gas and dust that fills the space between the stars. This interaction can create shocks and turbulence, which can produce additional emission and polarization. To separate the neutron star's emission from these other sources, we would need more detailed models and simulations, which can account for the complex physics and geometry of the supernova remnant. This discovery is a major breakthrough for the field of astrophysics, as it reveals the origin and nature of the neutron star, as well as the fate of the massive star that exploded in SN 1987A. It also demonstrates the incredible capabilities of the James Webb Telescope and the collaborative efforts of the scientific community. It is also a fascinating example of how neutron stars are the most mysterious and extreme objects in the universe. I hope you have enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting about the neutron star in SN 1987A and neutron stars in general. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback. Thank you for watching and see you next time.